I didn't realize that the Ukrainian and Russian military were peeping screen just a few months ago. Fire Force did an episode about time travel. It's about how we would be more effective against the Russians if we crossed into Ukraine from God's point of view. In that program, there was a paragraph that mentioned the use of drones. And the general content was that the Fire Force was the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian army, commanding the Ukrainian army to adopt drone tactics on a large scale what was the missile hunting small fix for access across the street and so on, can be used as a weapon on a scale that at one point could block out the sun. When that episode first aired, there were a lot of people in the comments section saying that this play is feasible and that this play is impractical and that's what everybody didn't expect. It's only been three short months since the so-called one drink plot was realized immediately at the annual conference. The president of Ukraine said that at least one million aircraft would be produced for the Ukrainian military by 2024. It is expected that more than 200 manufacturers will participate in the production of the intrusion UAV with virtual reality helmet remote control. Earlier this year, Russian media revealed that the Russian army's 1 million Lancet drones would soon be deployed in combat. All the firepower wants to say about these two separate plans is that a total of 2 million will be more than firepower dares to write in the paper. Is there any way for the infantry to survive at this rate? Not long after this war technically begins. Social media began to stream videos of various drone strikes on targets posted by both Ukrainian and Russian forces. Of course, there are more videos of the Ukrainian army fighting the Russian army, at first. Many people did not pay much attention to these tactics. It wasn't going to change the war. But as the war dragged on and more and more videos of remote-controlled drones hitting tanks and infantry and vehicles were going viral, it became clear to everyone that it took so long to hit this little guy. It's the hero of the war and in many of the videos. These drones are so rudimentary that they only hang a grenade. But in spite of all this, he's the target of the attack even though in individual videos, the Russians can occasionally bounce a grenade away. But it's not gonna stand up to one drone after another. And we all know what happens, right? They almost always end up with blood flying around. So are these drone infantry really just passive fighters? Why don't we put aside the tactical operation of drones today? and talk about how to effectively counter the topic of no one. The advantage of drones is that they are not only cheap, but can be copied in large numbers in a short period of time. So they are eager to create a value imbalance between the offensive and the defensive sides. So a $1,000 drone is hanging onto an equally cheap grenade. It can easily destroy a trench a little bit bigger. It can be attached to a rocket or even a ricocheted mine. And most importantly, the drone can be flown back and reused and it's not only much more visual than a guided projectile that costs tens of thousands of dollars or a hundred thousand dollars. And it's more cost effective, which is the core reason why drones are being used so much on the battlefield. So how do you break this as an infantry or ground unit? The most popular way to do it, equipping infantry with a dedicated jammer gun or jammer backpack handheld jammer guns also known as anti-drone directional guns. At present, it is generally used by the police. So it is called a directional gun, mainly because it uses a directional high power and limited electricity. Interference with the drone's remote control signal will cause the drone to lose the external communication link and GPS positioning signal. According to the exit rules of most civilian drones, when they lose their signal source, they usually land in place according to law. Some manufacturers also have backdoors that allow drones to land directly after receiving a police signal or to land in place. Once they enter an area, this seems like a solution to the current problem. But we have to overcome a few problems first, which is where to land. Above, we are talking about the interference faced by the civilian use of drones or injuries. And in the confrontation between the two areas, any party will not directly use the high probability of cracking the original system. Even a part of the drone is a temporary assembly of the system is more chaotic 78 this kind of drone. We can temporarily call it a model modification. The model UAV will not land in place after losing the command signal, but will return to the original path of the inertial route until after flying out of the interference range it will automatically resume the communication link to the host 
at this time, the host will most likely control the UAV and carry out another wave of airstrikes. Anti-drone directional gun. If you want to continuously interfere with it, you have to hold the gun and chase it to the local position, of course. The military is not all high-end goods. May not be such a delicate setting, but in any case, the anti-drone directional gun or interference backpack cannot be common sense on it. It's true that the Ukrainians and Russians have used these kinds of guns to shoot down drones in the field. But the cases of drones being shot down are very rare compared to videos of drones hitting each other's positions and walking away safely. In addition to the unsustainable jamming time, the second problem that anti-drone directional guns or jamming packs need to solve is the reaction time. At present, these devices that interfere with drone signals have a defect. That their jamming signals are originally directional, it's regional. Which means the defense has to see where the drone is before it can emit electromagnetic waves. Which might be easier for someone who's flown the drone to understand, right? Most small four-axis machines are difficult to detect with the naked eye at a distance of 200 meters, which is almost equivalent to invisibility. That's how we lose tens of thousands of drones a year. In the civilian world, no GPS, no field of view, and sometimes the drone can hover 300 meters away and still not see the base. In other words, it is difficult for defenders to detect such drones in advance at a distance of 300 meters on the battlefield, whereas a distance of 300 meters is 2 or 3 seconds for a normal drone and maybe 2 or 3 seconds faster, even if the infantry raised a jammer gun or a machine gun in time. Even a catch net would not be able to achieve the precision designed to hit these tiny Iron Star drones for 10,000 steps, even if you can achieve this level of precision. The defense itself is basically in the range of the drone weapon, and that's not even taking into account the number of drones. And the third problem is the number of drones which is easier to understand. The attacking side could be armed with a million drones, while the defending side is obviously unlikely to be armed with the same number of jammers. It's not possible with a third fewer brains and a lot more to do. Then defend against drones. You can't take a flare gun and shoot it up in the sky. And just to give you a trivia, Basically 80% or more of the cost of all small military UAVs. They are used for anti-jamming and unobstructing such as Persian motorcycles that look cheap but are not cheap. So there's no way to take out a drone with an electron gun. And the answer is pretty obvious by now. Individual signal blockers are effective but not very effective and have long been common on the battlefield and from that we can extend another result. Regardless of the cost, Manual targeting of high-rate weapons such as the M13 for machine gun will not be very effective in intercepting drones. One might say what if you use radar to detect it automatically. That's not going to work right now. Radar is poor at detecting small drones and in theory can reflect radar waves from a sparrow to a locust. The same goes for a miniature drone. Except that the electromagnetic waves it bounces off are so small that it's impossible for a radar to pick up a signal and tell exactly what it is, right? So we're not going to open fire if it's a protected animal. That could be a big deal while the radar hesitates. The micro drones may have already reached his target area or even completed reconnaissance or attack missions and the lightning force has seen one idea. Before, the idea is that once the drone takes off, it must send out a signal to communicate with the owner at which point it can be detected or intercepted with lateral radar. If the lateral efficiency of the individual is too low, it can be mounted on the vehicle so that it can achieve full search from the current situation. This approach is indeed effective and is now the mainstream means of military anti-drone equipment. But how can it be said that the US military has not yet equipped large-scale UAV equipment on military vehicles? For only one reason, well, anti-radiation missiles don't run a dozen times on their side radars. And if the defense can have side radars, why can't a drone have one on it for counter jamming and then the drone can have side radars on it? And then it can be programmed to run straight at the jammer if it detects strong jamming, a drone that's used as a return drone. For a suicide attack of course you could say I shut down the jammer. And the return drone lost its target, right? It's true that drones fly slower than missiles. And can't use inertia to keep flying once they lose their target. It sounds like a viable solution. But unfortunately at today's A1S, 
A drone costing a few thousand dollars can keep up with a ground jammer. An area often has a drone like a tree stand on standby. As an anti-drone device that can be turned off for a while but if it's turned off for a long time. So what is the value of passive radar lateralization? Compared to these methods is relatively safe. The location of the drone is determined by a laser scan. And then the anti-aircraft aircraft will shoot it. And not only avoid the risk of anti-radiation missile strikes, it also compensates for the lack of artificial vision. Or the use of a ground platform with a remote-controlled weapon station suitable for zealous use, and write the automatic tracking program to carry out stable photoelectric tracking of the UAV. This method can not only improve the success rate of the attack on the UAV, it can also effectively avoid the risk of being locked, which means that the thermal formation is appropriate without shutting down the power supply. However, these two methods he also has a common disease that is particularly easy to be the other side of. The group of no one can also be understood as targeted retaliation, just because you can't lock the jamming signal source doesn't mean the drone pilot can't see the image imagine a few hundred dollars of drones 100 will a few hundred thousand dollars for a military vehicle if it is your car do you change the general is whether it is a soldier or a car it's so hard to deal with a lot of drones right now that we're gonna have to figure it out somewhere else so far the firepower course has decided that there are two effective ways to do this and let's talk about the first one that the u.s military has come to a conclusion about a long time ago. The best weapon against drones is drones. Just as the best weapon against tanks is tanks, electronic station drones are airborne platforms on which lateral radars are mounted, not only to detect small and manned, but also to have a bottom-up strike capability. The tracking and control of drones on the battlefield. In large areas of the industry are compared with small drones. The speed and sound lines of this aerial platform are also hard to target and easy to escape. Even if the other side's killer drone has found the jammer and can't keep up with the speed, is always helpful. From this point alone, the electronic station aircraft is one of the few effective means to ensure their own safety. While resisting small drones, it's just that electronic warfare aircraft have to look for shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missiles before they fly to the battlefield. You'd better be careful if you do because any fighter is much more expensive than a tank. In any case, this is the most effective way to counter drones at the moment. There is another way, which is to run. We've seen in a lot of videos that some soldiers are actually aware that drones just don't have an effective response. In that case, they're usually going to cover at full speed or run away and while it may seem passive, it's not necessarily a good way to counter the drone. For a single shot with no guidance and only inertia, the kill radius is about 7 meters. It's still okay for a man to get out of 7 at full speed. But only if the drone can't catch up. For example, if you run into a dense forest in a flat area, you'll have to take care of yourself. The above approach is a kind of fire force joke that you should not take seriously. Let alone the future of the existing anti-drone methods have some loopholes. It's either an extreme mismatch of value on both sides of the ball or an extreme mismatch of speed and size before fully automated laser weapon systems and counter drone defenses are fully developed. Small drones can be a problem on the battlefield in the same way that people fight mosquitoes at night when you turn on the light and the mosquitoes can't run away and they come back. What do you do when you're running around your ear and you can't get enough of it but use a WMD mosquito coil? This is similar to a fully automated laser weapon system or an anti-drone defense system. The principle of the laser system should be familiar to everyone. Let's take a simple look at the latest UAV defense system of the US military. According to the US military, the anti-drone defense system uses the latest drone detection and tracking algorithms with a three-place radar that can detect small targets in the air. At a range of 10 kilometers to 20 kilometers the system works. When a drone appears within its radius, Z sends a signal that makes it automatically return to its starting point or crash in place. The systems that disable drones are now being sold to customers. The military has not named for security reasons alone. At this point, you will find that the principle of this system and the function of the jammer gun is similar. But the scope is larger and it sounds like the effect should be very good. It's hard to say how effective it will be in the field. 
and how long it will be before it's ready for mass service but in any case. These are the weapons of the future, right? At the very least. There are not too many means to effectively counter small drones, which means that in a short time, small drones will still be in unsolved armaments on the battlefield. Objectively speaking, the view of the US military is close to correct. The best weapon against drones is the drone machine thing. The machine to solve the problem that people to solve the machine pile out of the problem is a little different from the American military. View is that the fire force believes that the drone against small drones must not be expensive. Electronic fighters should be small drones, the same small drone. As to how these two drones formed a confrontation in the air is not yet known. If you know can leave your own opinion in the comments section, you can also share your opinion on what you think is an effective way to combat small drones. Before I finish talking about the Dutch team, 308 in Denmark and then no F-16. After the Netherlands announced that it will provide Ukraine with 6 plus F-16 plus on the previous number of aid to bring the total to 20 for this batch of human chefs is timely. Not only that, but a few days ago the joint forces of the Ukrainian armed forces just said that the Ukrainian army will not only have a large number of 16 fighter jets, it has also built an air-to-ground missile with a range of 300 kilometers to 500 kilometers. Although the commander did not disclose the type of weapon or who carried it, but the outside world is speculating that the missile is likely to be the US-made AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Ground Defense Area Missile. Service has two variants, AM-58. I with a range of 518 kilometers and AGM with a range of 920 kilometers. It is an air-launched circular missile capable of striking ground targets with a stealthy design that reduces the probability of radar venting the missile and increases its survivability. The HM-158A missile is equipped with a clear burst kill warhead using Global Positioning Assisted Inertial Navigation System. The anti-jamming capability is very strong and helps the Ukrainian army to damage high-value targets with an average range of more than 500 kilometers which allows the Ukrainian army to launch outside the Russian defense area. There is no need to risk the map. And the acm 6 b has a longer range of more than 900 kilometers, which is a true long-range building system established. And the, the GML-8B is still very flexible after launch and has the ability to retarget. And the United States is also preparing to develop an improved version of the GMMB. The range is more than 1,900 kilometers. And the GML-8C is based on the B-type developed specifically to use illegal electric strikes. If both A and B can be provided to Ukraine, it will provide Ukraine with a strike capability. Far beyond that of the Storm Application Cruise Missile, another missile that could be offered to Ukraine is the Turkish AGM-84H out of each area missile that can be integrated with F-Stone fighters. In addition to the ability to strike and strike accurately, it also uses a very flexible attack mode although the range is only 273 kilometers. But the U.S. military has a large stockpile. And the technology used in this missile is not so sensitive that the risk of it being acquired by Russian military agencies is not too high. So far the Ukrainian Air Force has eliminated the cliff missiles as its primary land strike weapon but has largely abandoned the use of rockets or bombs, mainly because the Ukrainian army has no direct air rights. And with these weapons outside the area, the Ukrainian army did achieve very good results. But other information about the specific type. That's it for this video. If you have anything to discuss, let me know in the comments section. I'm Firepower. See you next time. See you next time.